Welcome back, everybody. This is example four, th or sorry, six, th six three, uh, in our forces chapter, and this is going to have two parts. Um, there's going to be part A, which is right here, and part B, which got cut off. Um, I'll I'll tell you what that is a little bit later. But here we have a problem where we're going to need to take forces and break them into x and y components and solve them independently of each other. We know that the x and the y are independent of each other because they're at right angles to each other. Um, so that's where we're going to have to apply that. All right, so we've got Jack and Jill lifting up um, a pail of water that has a mass of 1.30 kilograms. All right, so that's the mass of the pail right there. Jack exerts a force kind of at this angle of um, seven newtons, all right? Force, we'll call it one. Can't really call it force J because Jack and Jill are the same letter. Um, so that's seven newtons. And force two, which is Jill, equals 11 newtons, all right? And that's at another angle right there. I should also say that, um, well, we don't like when angles are based off of the vertical. See that right there? 28 degrees from the vertical. It's perfectly legitimate. That is 20 degree, 8 degrees from the vertical, but we like when angles are based from the horizontal. So let's change this a little bit, okay? Make that horizontal, and so it's still going to be 28 degrees from the vertical, but what we care about is that angle right there, which if you subtract from 90 degrees, that's going to be 62 degrees. That's going to be our theta 2. All right, that's going to be Jill's angle, 62 degrees from the horizontal. So ignore the 28, we're going to deal with 62. And what the question is asking us is what does Jack's angle have to be? Because they're both pulling up at different angles. All right. Um, again, it's asking us what's that from the vertical. We don't want that. We want horizontal. So the question is, theta 1, what is that going to be? Okay. That's what we're going to solve for right there. So ignore from the vertical we want from the horizontal. Let's just keep it in terms that, that we're more familiar with. Um, another thing that is told to us is that uh, because of the pail's mass, all right, 1.3 kilograms, um, it has a downward force, so you might call it its weight force, of 12.8 newtons. And we'll talk a little bit later about how that weight force is calculated, but we know that force is mass times acceleration. And so if this um, pail has a mass and it experiences the acceleration of gravity pulling it downwards, then it will have a weight force, a downward magnitude force of 12.8 newtons. That's going to be important, right? Because Jack and Jill are going to have to overcome that with their, um, um, with their forces. <clears throat> um, one thing that, um, this got cut off right here, I'll just write it out for you. Part B is going to ask, calculate acceleration of the pail. All right, now that'll be in a subsequent video, okay? But um, part A, we're just going to find out what does Jack's angle have to be. He's holding the pail at an angle from the horizontal. We don't know what it is. We know his magnitude of his force. We know Jill's magnitude and her direction. Um... And uh, we need to find out what, what Jack's has to be. The important thing that isn't really stated here, but it's kind of implied that we need to kind of abide by is the fact that um, there is no X motion. Or that is, all the forces in the X direction are canceling each other out. We don't want it to move that way or this way. We want the pail to move directly upwards. All right, and so this upward term right here implies that it's moving in the y direction only and, in, uh, and not in the x direction, which means we can say this, that the net force in the x direction has to equal what? It has to equal zero, right? It has to sum up to zero. It doesn't mean there aren't any forces in the x direction. It, it means, however, that the net, all those forces added together are going to cancel out to being zero. After all, there are going to be forces in the x direction because we have this force of 11 newtons and this force of 7 newtons at, um, at an angle from the horizontal, which means 
we're going to call that force 2 in the x direction. We're going to call this force 1 in the x direction right there. Okay, so that means net force in uh, of, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, goodness. Sorry about that. Force 1 in the x direction plus force 2 in the x direction equals 0 newtons. All right, so the question is, what is uh, one of these two forces? Well, we don't know this one quite just. Oh, I don't want to do that. My goodness, sorry. And I just partially erased that right there. Uh, oh, I'm trying to undo the erase, and I can't. Sorry. Uh, force 1 in the x direction. I'm trying to circle it. There we are. We don't know what this is yet. We know the magnitude of the force, but we don't know the angle. Um, in fact, we're trying to solve for the angle. But we do know a lot over here. What would the x component of Jill's 11 newton force be? Well, we know her angle is 62 degrees from the horizontal, and we know her, um, her magnitude right there. So let's solve for Jill's x component of her force. Now keep in mind, we're not even dealing with y quite just yet. We'll do that with that in part b. But um, in this first part right here, we're just going to find, um, we're just going to deal with x's. So uh, the x component with the, with the force, that would be the magnitude times a cosine of theta, right? So that would be 11 cosine of 62 degrees, right? What do we get if we, uh, if we punch that in? 11 cosine 62, I get 5 point, I'll say, I'm going to round it to 5.2 newtons. All right. Well, if F1, if force 1 in the x direction plus force 2 in the x direction equals 0, then logic would tell us that force 1 in the x direction has to be negative 5.2 newtons. Right. You can also say that, all right, well, force 1 in the x direction, if we subtract the F2 over, equals negative force 2 in the x direction, and that, that proves a force right there. So this right here, actually both of these forces, that one and this one, you add them up, it means that the net force in the x direction is going to be 0 which means this will help us find the angle in the x direction, right? So let's look at Jack's side right here. So we now know that the force in the x direction, that is the x component of Jack's 7 newton force, is going to be negative 5.2 newtons. I probably shouldn't have written that negative sign in there. It's just 5.2 newtons in the negative direction, but we're just going to use that 5.2 to find out that angle right there. All right, we know that for, um, for any angle, we have the... Uh, the adjacent and the, and the hypotenuse, we can find out what that angle is by using the cosine, right? If the cosine of theta equals the adjacent 5.2 over the hypotenuse, 7, I don't really need to put the newtons in there, then that means that the theta is going to be the inverse cosine of that fraction, 5.2 over 7. So that, this is going to tell us what Jack's angle has to be uh, that he's pulling up with 7 newtons. So the inverse cosine of 5.2 divided by 7, that's 42 degrees. 42 degrees from the horizontal because we changed that because um, that's going to be that angle right there. We changed it because we don't like it from the vertical. Okay, so that is the solution to part A. At what angle should Jack pull up, well, it's 42 degrees. If he puts it at too steep of an angle, it's going to throw off the balance, and this pail is going to slosh back and forth, and it's not going to be in balance with Jill's x, x force. Or, or too shallow of an angle, it'll change as well. But that's exactly the right angle with his force to counteract her force at her angle so that there's no, x, there's no net x force. It comes out to being zero. All right, so that's Jack's angle of 42 degrees. That's going to be it for... Um, part A right here. I'm going to pick up with part B in the next video and we're going to figure out what the acceleration of the pail is going to be. Hopefully, well it tells us the pail will accelerate upwards, so we're going to find out how quickly it will accelerate upwards. So that's it for now. See you on the next one.